Again, welcome to CS101, Introduction to Programming Using Python. This lab will cover chapter three of our course textbook, which is Decision Structures and Boolean Logic. Again, in our lectures, we went through the decision control structures, or which we also call selection statements. Uh, what is a relational operators? What is a logical operators? And how we formulate selection statements, conditions. So here we are going to solve two problems, again, using the decision control structures. Our first question said we have booksellers, and this booksellers has a book club that award points to its customers based on the number of books purchased each month. The points are awarded as following. So if a customer purchases zero books, he or she will earn zero points. If a customer purchases two books, he or she will earn five points. If a customer purchases four books, he or she will earn 15 points. If a customer purchases six books, he or she will earn 30 points. And if a customer purchases eight or more books, he or she will earn 60 points. So here we can see we have, we can formulate up to five conditions here. So now let's see our problem. Write a program that asks the user to enter the number of books that he or she has purchased this month. Then we are going to display the number of points awarded. Again, the conditions here tell us that the number of points a customer can earn based on the number of books he or she bought. So this means our input will be the number of books the customer buy. Then we can be able to assign award the points based on the number of books. So we have two variables here. First variable is number. We initialize it to zero to make sure there's no any value inside. And that will have our, or we will store our number of books customer will buy. Then we have a variable for points. This will be the points that we are going to award. So the first thing we ask the user to enter the number of books purchased, and we are using the input function. And we said enter the number of books purchased. Now, since we are going to use the relation operators to compare, we need input function normally give us a data that the type is a string. We can't use strings in our arithmetic operations most of the time. So we convert it to int. This time it's good to convert to int instead of float because the number of books is based on counting. And uh, we cannot say we buy 20.7 books. Either you buy 20 or you buy 21. So the type will be int, the whole number. So now we know the number of books the customer buy. Now we are going to write our condition to determine the points in N based on the number of books he bought. So if the customer buy two books, which we say if number equal to two, then we are going to assign five to the points variable which means you get five points. Now, if the customer buy four books, we assign 15 to points variable. If a customer buy six, we assign 30. And if a customer buy eight or more, then he earns 60 points, we assign 60. Else is zero. So if a customer buy, again, less than two, one or zero, then the points is zero. So now we're going to display our results. Here we say you have purchased uh, the input to enter for the normal books. And this NU depends on which condition uh, we get based on the normal books. We will know the points. The points we can get will be either 0, 60, 30, 15, or 5. So let's look at the second problem. Here we say a software company sells a package that retails for $99. Quantity discounts are given according to the following table. So if a customer buy between 10 to 19, then we are going to give him or her 10% discount. If it's between 20 to 49 quantity, then 20% discount. 50 to 99, 30% discount. If it's 100 or more quantities, get 40% discount. So here we can also use the if, elif, elif, else. We have four conditions here. 
So now let's look at the problem, write a program that asks the user to enter the number of packages purchased. The program should then display the amount of discount, if any, and also the total amount of the purchase after the discount. So here we know the retail price, we initialize it to 100, which is our constant variable, because based on the question, we have only one retail price. The software company sells a package that retails for $99. So the retail price is only one. So we can have a constant variable and initialize it. Now, the reason why we use constant variable here, let's say if we use, we have a large program and we use the $99 over 100 times. If I don't use a constant variable, it means I have to change it all over my program 100 times. But if I have a retail price constant variable, I initialize it to 99. If the value change to 100 or any value, I will come here and change it once and it will affect everywhere we use the retail price to change the price to the current price. So next we have a local variable. Our first variable is to get a quantity since we need a quantity. Also the full price. And here we are going to find a discount rate. And when we subtract a discount amount from the original amount, we will know the discount amount we have to pay. So we have the variable for quantity. The quantity will determine what this uh, what discount we get, or even we didn't get no discount. So for uh, discount. So for example, if I buy only five quantity, then there's no discount. Then we also have a variable for the full price. This will be the price before discount. Then we can calculate the discount rate because if I know the discount, uh, uh, for example, discount rate, we multiply that by the full price, we will get a discount amount. So we also have to find the discount amount. And then we can also find the total amount, which means we had all there. So let's see this problem. First, we need an input. Our input will be the quantity, say, since in the question is based on the quantity of packages that we get then that may determine what discount we have. So here we enter the quantity value into a variable named quantity. We change it to int, the data type of the quantity. So now we can calculate the discount rate. Now we say that if the quantity is greater than 99, based on the condition here, the discount rate will be 40%, which is 0 0.40. Now, elif, if quantity is greater than 49, which also we have the condition <clears throat> and 49 and more because we have 20 to 49, 50 to 99, 10 to 19. So 20 to 49 will be 20%, 50 to 99, 30%. So we can see that if it's greater than 49, then we have 30% or 0 0.30. Early, if, if the quantity is greater than 19, then we have 20%. And if it's greater than nine, we have 10%, which is 0 0.2, 0 0.10. Else we don't get no discount rate. So next we're going to calculate the full price. So the full price will be the quantity times the original retail price. And that will give us the full price. Then next we calculate the discount amount. So the discount amount will be the full price times the discount rate. The discount rate is based on the quantity of items we have. So we may have a discount rate of 0 0.4, 0 0.2, even zero, based on the number of items we bought. So after that, we can calculate the total amount now. We know the discount rate, we know the full price. So the total amount will be the full price minus the discount amount. And that will be the actual amount we're going to pay after the discount. So here we can display our result now. We use the print function. We say the discount amount is whatever the discount amount. We are using the format function to format the discount amount value to two decimal places. And the same thing for the total amount also. We use the format function. We format it to the format function. Normally we take the content of the data that you are using, the variable, in this case, discount amount, and the type of format you want, which will be our second parameters, uh, 0.2F, which means I want decimal or float, and two decimal places. 
So this will be the conclusion of our lab work. And again, see you in the next lectures.